It may just be nostalgia talking and be specific to me, but I think that Fatal Frame was the scariest game of my youth. A crazy horror game that introduced interesting mechanics, a lot of Japanese-style horror, and was just a great game all around. So it's a shame that we got the shaft when it came to the later Nintendo published titles. The only one we never really got over here was Fatal Frame 4 Mask of the Lunar Eclipse. We did a quick look of it a couple years ago, so now it's finally time to do a full review. Thankfully some hardcore fans put out an English patch so we know what's going on, so let's see what we missed out on. The Fatal Frame series was developed and published by Tecmo and originally launched on the PS2. In Japan it's called the Zero series. It offered a unique take on survival horror. It had settings, narrative elements, and atmosphere completely inspired by Japanese horror films and folklore. That's something we really hadn't seen at the time, with even Japanese developed horror hits like Resident Evil and Silent Hill taking place in American settings. There were three games that originally launched on the PS2. The first two are amazing, and the third one was solid, but other than one neat change to the structure, it felt like it didn't really bring enough new to the series. When the Wii hit, the series creators thought the motion controls would be the perfect fit for the series. They brought in Grasshopper Manufacturer to work with Suda51 who designed, co-directed, and co-wrote the game. They also had an exclusive deal with Nintendo who would publish it. Apparently Suda wasn't sure about working on the game as he wasn't a fan of the genre, and the original creators called the process of the three companies working together an utter mess. Knowing that, it's pretty incredible to see what the final result was. As far as Suda's involvement goes, from just playing the game you wouldn't even know he worked on it. It's a solid horror game and just feels like part of the series. There's no over-the-top insane stuff happening here, so it's good to see that he can also make a great game outside of his wheelhouse. Zero Four has all the hallmarks the series is known for. It's a third-person survival horror game where you go through a desolate, remote location in Japan that's haunted by vengeful spirits that attack your character and assault the player with all manner of jump scares. Thankfully, your means of defense is a spirit camera which acts like a shotgun for ghosts. You bring it up in first person, aim and shoot. There is a bit more to it than that. You can always frame the photos correctly, get multiple spirits at once in a shot, and wait for good moments to do more damage, but Zero Four adds even more depth to the combat. Aside from the ghosts that attack you, spirits also pop up through visions of the past that can be captured with your camera. This is an interesting way to reveal more about the spirits and the story, as you see these quick moments of the past and can put together what each spirit was doing while they were alive and construct a bit of a timeline for them. It also adds a collection element to the games, where like a horrific Pokemon Snap, you try to capture all those moments to complete your ghost list, which ends up unlocking extras. These also act as a guide, since following them always leads you to your next objective. Getting into this game specifically, there's several changes that mix things up. First up is the obvious, the controls. The camera has been moved to an over-the-shoulder perspective, which gives the controls a Resident Evil 4 kind of feel. It's technically still tank controls, but because of the placement of the camera, it doesn't feel as hard to get a handle on. If you've played a recent Resident Evil or Gears of War, you'll know what I mean by that movement. A nice touch is the run button, which you can just hold down and your character will run forward without you having to hold the analog stick up. That lets you focus on left and right turning. You can also shake the Wiimote to turn around instantly on the spot. The motion controls are used to aim your flashlight up and down in third person mode, and to aim the camera up and down in shooting mode. You're not using the pointer to do this, instead tilting the Wiimote up and down is what does the aiming, so it's a bit awkward at first. It's also strange that the motion controls aren't used to aim left and right, but you'll get used to it pretty quickly. I'm sure they tried to have it work with just pointing the Wiimote, but it must not have worked well, or maybe it was just too easy in a game that's supposed to be slower paced. In third person, moving your flashlight up and down lets you search for items that flash when the light hits them. When you find an item or point of interest, in some cases you'll just take it. In others, you'll have to hold down the button to slowly reach out and grab it. Sometimes a ghost will grab you before you can reach the item, so you have to cancel that grab to avoid it, but it happens so fast it's pretty tough to do. If you can avoid it, you can step away and come back to the item to pick it up again. If you're caught by the ghost though, you lose that item, which is always just a consumable, so it's no big loss, but it can add up. It's not just the items that have this reaching technique used for attention though, it's also used as a tactic to cover loading times when moving between areas. And because of that, the game offers some very dramatic door opening animations. All around the movement is pretty slow. 
Your characters don't move very quickly and aiming isn't as fast as an FPS, but it works for the atmosphere. It can be annoying when you're doing the typical backtracking that these games are known for though. Graphically, it is a Wii game, so keep your expectations tempered. It's not much of a step up from the previous games, especially when the art style is grungy and grainy, trying to keep its old horror film aesthetic in place. One neat thing is the fabric physics, if you can call them that. The way the clothing on the characters move as they do, and the old sheer curtains sway near windows is a nice touch. As for the audio, it's rough and grating. It uses near every audio effect that's effective in horror, and having the ghost cries come from the Wiimote when you beat them is a nice touch. It all fits really well and adds to the creamy atmosphere, but I can't exactly call any of it pleasant. Like the previous games, we get another great narrative involving another fictional Japanese ritual surrounded by a series of mysteries which lure the game's characters back to the island setting of the game. The game takes place on Rogetsu Island where a ritual is said to connect the living world to the other world where the souls reside through the moon. The ritual is performed every 10 years. At the time of the last ritual, five young girls were kidnapped and found in a hidden area under the hospital on the island. Shortly after that, all of the island's inhabitants were found dead or have mysteriously disappeared. With no memory of what's happened to them, three of the kidnapped girls return to the now deserted island to break a curse which seems to be killing them one by one. The narrative wraps together the rituals of the island, the death and disappearance of the inhabitants, a disease unique to the island, and the kidnapping of the girls into a compelling narrative for the game. The game takes place inside the main hall and hospital on the island and in the surrounding areas. It's split up into 13 chapters which have the player controlling four different protagonists. The playable characters include the three girls, Misaki, Madoka, and Riku, as well as the detective Choshiro, who found them originally and has followed them back to the island. Getting into the combat, the three girls use the camera obscura to defend themselves from the spirits. Aside from the basic point and shoot, you can lock onto ghosts and build up spirit power to take more damaging shots. You can also switch between various types of film which just do more damage. You have an infinite supply of the weakest film, but can find several higher grade ones. As for Choshiro, he gets a spirit flashlight which feels very different from the camera, adding a new kind of combat to the game. The flashlight can exercise spirits by focusing its light on them. You aim and hold the shoot button to charge a beam and let go to release it on the spirits. You can fire off shots pretty rapidly, but the flashlight's power can take a while to recharge. The flashlight can also take pictures, and, and funny enough, I think it's actually easier with the flashlight to capture the ghosts that go by quickly, because once you charge it up, it just captures the ghost automatically. You don't have to worry about taking the picture at the wrong time and having to reload, which usually ends up meaning you just miss that ghost. For both the camera and flashlights, there's new optimizations. Blue crystals you find throughout the game let you upgrade their basic specs including damage, reload time, max charge, charge speed, and more. You also find a number of lenses which can be swapped out to give different parameters to the camera or flashlight. Their effects can be upgraded with red crystals also found throughout the game. These effects allow you to slow down ghosts, power up your shots, and more. You can activate them with the press of a button and they use up the spirit power you collect from taking pictures of ghosts. Lastly, you unlock new camera functions throughout the game. These upgrades give you new features like letting you see a spirit's health, locating hidden ghosts, and the ever important but tough to master last second dodge which lets you avoid incoming attacks. Aside from film crystals and upgrades, you'll also come across healing items. Like any good survival horror game, you'll have to be careful to ration what you can find to make it through the game, especially near the end of the game where you'll encounter some pretty tough segments. But if you find yourself low on items, you can just spend the points you earn for taking good pictures at the shop at any save point. This lets you stock up on more film and healing items. The good stuff is limited in how much you can purchase, but you can buy more than enough lower tier items that you can spam through the game to just get through it. Like I mentioned before, the ghost list is back. This time there are 233 entries on the list. Well, kinda. Like I said, when a ghost appears, you have a couple seconds to snap a shot of it. 
This is where the motion controls can sometimes get in the way if you're not ready for it, so you might need to clean up the ones you missed on successive playthroughs. It is important to note though that when one of these spirits appear, you'll automatically look at them when you bring up your camera, so that's a big help on getting tough shots that are out of your sight when they appear. One crazy thing here though is apparently the game shipped with a bug that makes it impossible to complete the list. Apparently you can only capture at most 227 ghosts. This is a bit of a shame for something we'll get into in a bit, but yeah, for now let's get into the new collectible which is the 79 dolls that you can take pictures of. You aren't really told about them at first, which is kind of annoying because of how many you'll just pass by in the opening chapters, but eventually you'll discover that you can photo them to collect them, and that unlocks more extras post-game. At the end of the game, after a series of tough boss battles and an annoying rhythm game that you have three chances to complete before the final boss respawns, you'll get one of two endings based on your difficulty mode. Afterwards, you'll save your clear data, which you can load to get a new menu with additional options. Here you'll be able to purchase extras. If you've completed the objectives in-game to unlock them, then you can use the points that you've earned in-game to purchase them. These unlockables include more camera upgrades and new costumes and accessories for each of the characters. There's some cool stuff here including dresses, yukatas, and some uh, Nintendo themed costumes like Zero Suit Samus and Luigi. There's also a gallery mode where you can view images, models, and some movies. You'll also get access to hard and nightmare difficulty modes, as well as the mission modes which makes up a series of tough battles with limited conditions. When you complete them, you'll unlock even more stuff, and you'll be able to earn some other rewards like more crystals. あの島へは近寄らないで、ルカ。お母さん、知らない方がいいことがあるの。でも私は確かめたい。あの時何があったのか。そして失った記憶の先に何があるの。Overall, I love the game. I think the motion controls could be a bit tighter, but after playing Fatal Frame 5 on the Wii U, I ended up really missing how the Wiimote controlled the aiming of the flashlights here. That said, it's still just another Fatal Frame game, so if the series didn't interest you before, this isn't likely to change your mind. It's annoying that Nintendo of America didn't bring this out over here, because I think Wii gamers were looking for something different, and this may have introduced them to the series. Thankfully, the fans who translated it did a great job in making it more accessible to us. I don't think the game would be too tough to play in its original Japanese, but the patch is amazing and lets us see the story, so thank you to that team and I highly recommend if you're going to check this game out to try and get that patch. I know it's not an easy game to get a hold of now, so I'm going to be doing a full story video in the future going through the game, so fans who can't check it out will be able to see everything that happens. So yeah, Zero Four, what a shame we didn't get this out over here when we were really hurting for niche and great Wii titles. It's hard to say how it ranks among all the Fatal Frame games because it's such a strong series, but this is probably one of the best. So definitely worth checking out if you can. Hopefully you enjoyed this review. Uh, stay tuned for more stuff. Subscribe. I got more reviews coming up and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.